Stay there, Watson. <laughs> I tell you, uh, it's hilarious. Watson is always the best at Googling things. He may even be better than I am. But he's leaving to go to dinner, so I'm going to let him go. I knew it. I heard him and his girlfriend in the background complaining. <laughs> on air, that's funny for the folks listening on the web. And, and, and I know we're getting into serious issues. we got Naomi Wolf here, and I'm babbling. The point is, I need the listeners at the Prison Planet Forum to create a section right now and find me all the articles, find the sub-clip out of uh, Police State 2, the takeover, with the Army documents, uh, I know that link was dead on InfoWars with the documents. Find those. Post them all right now. So before she leaves us at the end of the show, I can email those to her because time is of the essence. But bringing Paul Watson up, Paul, you brought up another key point, that British Ministry of Defense plan where they admitted the military is going to have to be used against the people of England and the United States. Uh, but uh, I guess you did do re the research a few months ago. I asked you to, and you did send Naomi that, so I appreciate you doing that, Watson. I just want to jump in and say that I did um, cite in Give Me Liberty an article in The New Yorker where uh, experts on new, a new generation of technologies and police forces were talking about crowd control technologies that mm -hmm. involve microwave guns as well as, you know, tasers which have killed 300 people and rubber bullets which are so lethal that, um, you know, they've stopped using them in the U.K. because they've killed so many Irish people. And something that was particularly disturbing to me about the first reports of Army Times that they've since backtracked on is that they were saying they're here to, quote, unquote, subdue unruly individuals. So just to, yeah. you know, be sure that I've said to you, Alex, what I want to say, why am I so scared as someone who studied closing societies is that again and again around the world, um, the leader will deploy soldiers to harass, or arrest voters and opposition leaders during an election. Yeah, this is so, classic tyranny. Since we have Paul, let me just say bye to him and then Naomi. I'm going to give oh, you I'm the sorry. floor. No, 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 no. Well, you got. You're going to have the floor here in just a moment. You just were shocked to hear all that stuff. So I want to make sure you get it because what you cover actually is able to break through the mainstream media. Uh, Paul, uh, I guess if you're not aware or don't remember that article, I'm surprised you don't. I'll just find it. I've give found it. Found one headline, Alex, which is. From CNN, the link's dead, but the headline's still there. It says, Air Force Chief Test Weapons on Testy U.S. Mobs. Mm, from that's it. September 2006. Okay, say the headline again. That's not the exact CNN? one. I, yeah, the, 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 the AP is the key, but, but say it again, Watson. It, yeah, it's, it's an AP story, which was carried by CNN. Air Force mm -hmm. Chief Test Weapons on Testy U.S. Mobs. Is the one I oh, wow. With. Okay, yeah, that was it. Okay, see, Watson yeah, did that, you. complaining and mumbling, uh, but, but he did a great job. Watson, that's why I need my magic, man. You Thank found you it. So good much. good job, Redcoat. Uh, well, by the I'll way... blog about this right away after I check this. By the way, Paul... So by the way, Paul, uh, you know the British government has now announced they want to use the army and police, quote, during economic collapses, so you have the same thing going on there. Well, listen to this, Alex. There was a Channel 4 News segment last night with the top general from Port and Down, an army general, who said that, um, let me get the exact quote here. He said that, quote, we have to upgrade, enhance, review, renew our activities in recent times because of increased civilian resilience. And that's the top general of uh, the Port and Down bioweapons <laughs> facility in England. He said that on Channel 4 News last night. And the British Ministry of Defense 10 year battle plan, they call it what their prospectus, uh, this is the declassified version, almost 200 pages, admitted the military's job is for the elite to suppress the populations who are going to be uh, 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 basically uh, turned into paupers in a neo feudal state. Watson, what's the name of that British Ministry of Defense report? I forget it. Um, I, it doesn't spring to mind at the moment. London Guardian like, first broke it, but they had a hyperlink to it. Yeah, it was in the London Guardian. All right, I want our 20, researchers 20 to post everything on this, all of it now, at Prison Planet as we work for a team. Paul Watson, thank you. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Right, uh, Paul, are you going to Julio's to eat? No, I don't live in that area anymore. It's a new restaurant. Where are you going, <laughs> Paul? It's called West 10. <laughs> <laughs> People can join him there and eat. Say hi to Ehan for me. All right, there goes Watson. I'm out of control. Naomi Wolf, you have the floor. Go through the steps, your new book, the new video, and the points you're making. I have I have done a classic Alex Jones. Go ahead. Sure thing. Well, you know, I'm grateful to you. And um, it is, I guess what I do want to say is 
we're in a time where this kind of brainstorming among citizens, not just us, but you know, all of you know, all of my readers, all of your listeners and readers and viewers, um, we all have uh, access to information that we need to educate one another about and use our critical intelligence about it and, and find solutions among ourselves because clearly we can no longer trust uh, many of our state-supported or corporate-supported institutions to do it for us. So this is exactly what people should be doing across the country is um, bringing each other information and checking it out and planning for action. So very quickly, uh, the 10 steps, well, invoke a terrifying internal and external threat, often a real one, create a prison system outside the rule of law where torture takes place, develop a paramilitary force not answerable to the people, create a surveillance apparatus aimed at ordinary citizens, start to infiltrate and harass citizens' groups, um, start to target key individuals, start to arbitrarily detain and release citizens. You start to create legislation. We're seeing it more and more. You mentioned the uh, RNC-8 uh, legislation that... Uh, it, it, uh, criminalizes speech or expands the definition of terrorist or traitor or spy so that ordinary citizens uh, who are engaged in dissent get criminalized. And you start to see restrictions of the press, like the arrests of journalists we spoke about. Um, and finally, we're at step 10, which is subvert the rule of law and make it easier to declare martial law. And so to, you know, to just make sure that I tell you the, the, the hopeful news, um, it's that I did, since we last spoke, Alex, a study times and places where citizens effectively fought back against encroaching darkness of this kind. And um, so I learned what always works. Um, and I offer uh, citizens in Give Me Liberty, which is the sequel to The End of America, which is just out now, um, I- exactly those lessons from other times and places where citizens did fight back as real patriots and revolutionaries. But I also go to the founding generation, ordinary people uh, of, from all walks of life who who were captivated by this vision of liberty we were supposed to inherit. And I, I go back to the seven core principles we're supposed to hold on to as Americans in a time of crisis like this and in a time where we're being bombarded with what I call fake patriotism to accept what I call a fake democracy, uh, a sham of a democracy. And finally, I give citizens at the end of Give Me Liberty 55 action steps they can take in building this new army, a transpartisan army of uh, patriot revolutionaries. Um, taking back the power that we should be having. Oh, I love that term, transpartisan. Yeah, it's important. No longer being... Okay, now go back to Posse Comentatus, the points you were trying to make earlier when I kind of went off the rabbit trail of ferreting documentation for you. And then later I did find the AP article, and uh, it's exactly as we said. And, well, I'm, I'm so glad, but in the meantime, just before before I go back to it, why, I mean, I, I feel stupid asking you this because I'm in the mainstream media, but why aren't any mainstream news outlets covering the deployment of the 1st Brigade? The ACL, you just filed a Freedom of, of Information request demanding to know where they are and what they're here for. But I'm, I'm just gobsmacked that there's no independent reporting. And the one thing I was wondering is, do you think it's classified? I mean, are journalists in a position that they're not reporting on it because it's it's considered classified. Yeah. Uh, what do you, what's your view of that? Yes, and we we have the, the classified documents fell into our hands because an FBI agent on the day before Thanksgiving in uh, just south of Temple on I-35, the Army came up and told Mike Hansen, my camera guy who was driving back from visiting family, to turn his camera off, and Mike refused. So the FBI showed up an hour later and gave him classified documents by accident. And then uh, they Are you had, serious? No, no, no. They they had and they had gotten Mike's number that okay. they had asked for it, and he gave it. And they called a few hours later after he left his cell phone, demanding it back. In fact, get me Mike Hansen. Uh, I'm gonna uh, <laughs> later in the next hour we'll get Mike on. I mean, there's video of all this, Naomi. It's, it's on video. The FBI pulling up and giving it to him. They, they, they completely screwed up. They get, right, but why? How does this go to why journalists aren't covering the deployment of the First Brigade? Because uh, their editors, I mean, it came out that Bush has spent billions a year on fake news reporters and Operation Mockingbird. 